Hey, hey, hey guys! Welcome back to another tutorial regarding how to build and create cool web pages using, of course, a 100% free online web developer tools. This time we'll keep working with CodePen.io. So, as we did on previous sessions, the first thing we're going to carry out is to log in. So, we're gonna click on login button at the top part of the bar, and then as we did in previous sessions, uh, we're gonna log in using our school mail or in this case, I'm gonna use one of my personal accounts. Okay, now we will just log in and today's objective aims to create and of course apply some styles to our current project or in other words we're just going to practice with some CSS style sheet files. So, once we're inside our project time, it's time to do some recall. As we did in previous sessions, uh, we just work out with some table structures. And uh, we just manipulate cells to produce uh, specific types of containers. As you guys can see in the HTML syntax we just work out on last classes, it's time to check again uh, important markup tags that we have inside this table structure. So if we start scrolling down, you guys will see that we just work out with some specific key markup tags such as the table markup tag that uh, defines a table inside an HTML document. Also, remember that every single table is divided by rows and columns or cells as well. TR defines a row and a TD defines each cell in the project. Also, it's important to remind you guys that inside every markup tag we can add some attributes such as height, width and for some table adjustments we can merge or combine cells by using the cold span attribute. Um, remember that every single attribute needs a value, so keep that in mind. So let's take a look at our final result. This web page structure was based on what, you probably may ask. Remember that we use some web page template samples, just as the one you guys are watching on screen right now. Of course, Based on my web page needs, this sample template suffered some adjustments. For instance, I adjusted some containers on the first row to design a navigational menu for my entire website. Plus, if you guys keep comparing the base picture with the outcome that you have on screen, you guys will see that I clone some elements such as the second row and the third, fourth and fifth rows as well. So once we're done now with the structure and we keep in mind that every single container uh, hold contents such as text, video and audio, it's time to work out with some CSS style sheets. Well, it's showtime! So let's begin with the creation of our CSS stylesheet file. The first thing we're going to do is to create a new file. So right at the left pane of our codepen.io menu, you will see this button labeled New File. Once we click on New File, you guys will see that we have the possibility to create several types of files. From HTML files with the following extensions, HTML, HTM, or CSS in also JavaScript files for the behavior. So, uh, since this tutorial is focused on creating style sheets, we're gonna be focusing on the CSS extension files. So, we're just gonna type a name, in this case, uh, well, let's type style.css And once we hit the enter key, we'll see that 
CodePen.io automatically recognizes the new file type and shows us a blue label tab in our work area. Now, let's remember that CSS style sheets are useful for apply and define options such as font types, add some colors, hexadecimal color codes, font sizes, alignment settings, plus some cool effects for objects such as images, videos, and animations, among others. So, how do we start? Well, in our previous sessions, we've just worked out with some base syntax files that you can find attached uh, on the description or in our classroom files. Last class, we started with some HTML syntaxes to produce the table, and today we're going to be focusing on the CSS syntax file. Here you will see a set of lists with some specifically elements that you guys might recognize. Let's begin with the first six lines. The first six lines from H1 to H6 represent the heading style lines. Also, we have the P line for styling some paragraphs and we have a Lee line for applying bullets and add some style. The last two lines are for objects and backgrounds as well. For example, we have the IMG line to apply some effects to our images and finally the body line to define the background color our web page is going to have. Now, this description is over and it's time to copy this CSS syntax file and paste it inside our codepen.io project. Okay, now we have this base syntax and it's time to adjust the fonts and the colors according to our web page needs. So, here are some recommendations for you. In terms of color combinations, the first recommendation is to check this web page, Adobe Color Wheel. In Adobe Color Wheel, you guys will see a fully adjustable assistant regarding color combinations. Um, Adobe Color Wheel has some color harmony rule list that can help you guys to set the best color that suits the needs of your web page by dragging the circles inside the wheel. Well, based on our needs, we're going to select the monochromatic harmony rule for our web page color combination. Now, you guys will see that I have suitable colors for being used in every section of my web page. But one of the advantages you guys can see on the screen is the possibility to have the hexadecimal color code for every single color we can use inside our file. So, the next step is to copy this hexadecimal color code because we're going to use this for our web page background. So once we copy this, we're going to scroll down to the body line and the next step is to replace the base color that in this case is some kind of brightish blue and replace these two words for the hexadecimal color code. Just like that. Now, once we set up the colors, um, it's time to focus our attention in some text. Okay, now with all the set of colors properly set up for our web page, it's time to focus our attention on the text. Uh, basically, some people find uh, some cool fonts checking the web or checking on Google. Some of the pages that I have to recommend for you guys today is this. If you type top trend or top 20 font types HTML, you will see this result. Hostinger.com offers us uh, a set of 20 best HTML web fonts to use in 2020. These fonts are divided in families and we have the classic fonts such as Arial, we have Times New Roman, Helvetica, times and so on so on so on so um, it's a matter of fact that 
Depending on our taste, uh, we can decide what type of font we will choose. For this exercise, I'm gonna choose Kendara for the titles. So remember that we have six different types of titles. So for the H1 title or H1 heading style, I'm going to replace the Arial base font for the Kendara one. And I'm gonna keep uh, the base Arial font type for the other heading tags. Now, for the paragraph, let's pick another one. So if we keep checking, we can choose the Optima one. So I'm gonna replace Arial with Optima plus times font type. Well, so I pulled this off. Now my CSS style sheet is ready after 20 minutes work and basically I decided to use base colors for the H1 up to H6 styles. Colors such as white and black and some others that I retrieved from my Adobe color wheel selection. Um, as a recommendation uh, in terms of fonts, I strongly recommend that uh, you guys must not exceed more than two different font types. In my case, I use Kindara for the titles and Optima for the text. Now the CSS style sheet file is ready. It's time to click and save all and run. Well, everything's saved, but we almost forgot. We haven't linked this file to our HTML document. So it's time to go back to the HTML base document the one with the table and all stuff, and we're gonna add a common line to link both files, the CSS file along with our HTML file. So after the title markup tag, you will see a style section. So we're gonna delete the comment that is below the styles comment, and we're going to replace its content with the simple common line to link both files. So we're gonna start by adding the link markup tag followed by the first attribute href equal and quotation marks and inside the quotations we're gonna place the file name. For this exercise this file name is style.css. Next we're going to add a new attribute that is called rel. Rel represents the relationship. So for the next attribute that we're gonna place, we're gonna put the words style sheet. Why? Because we're using a style sheet file. And finally, for this last comment, we're gonna use the type attribute. Inside the type attribute value, we're gonna put the words text slash CSS. Don't forget to close the angle bracket and we're done. Next, we click save all and run again and you will see the change. Now, the background color appears in our HTML document. Remember that the background color was set up based on our Adobe color wheel selection. So, in order to keep playing with all styles we just adjusted uh, a few minutes ago, let's add some objects into our HTML document. Let's start with some words in the menu. So, let's use some of these cells, so replace these comments and add some heading tags. Let's put some home title, some H1 title, and save all and run again. As you guys can see, the font type is the Kendara one we selected or we chose on the style list. Plus, uh, the text is on the center according to the alignment options we decided to put. In order to conclude with this exercise, it's time to add more styles or attributes to our web page sample. 
For instance, we're going to add uh, some background colors for the first row in order to define this as a navigational menu. So as an extra element based on the color combinations we found out in the Adobe color wheel, it's time to add an extra color in the first row. So in the first TR section, we're gonna apply the BG color attribute and let's select this new color. Let's copy this and paste it as the value in the VG color attribute on the TR markup tag. And voila! Now you see a new change in terms of a style. So with all of this, um, this is the way you guys can place and adjust CSS styles. So for the next lesson, we're going to keep working on inserting media elements, images, and videos as well. So, see you guys later. Bye-bye.